Hi there, folks. Welcome to episode 10 of I Don't Want to Hold Your Hand, the Beatles Quarantine Catalog, where I am attempting to play all 248 Beatles songs in chronological order while we are all stuck inside. Before we jump in, I am on YouTube at the Beatles Quarantine Catalog. You can subscribe on there and you won't miss a single song all the way to 248. I'm also on Instagram at James Penka. I post all sorts of Beatles and non-Beatles content on there. And then I'm on Venmo at James Penka if you would like to support the series. So when we last left the Beatles, they had just recorded a bunch of music in the summer of 1960 at Paul's childhood home. Now, since then, uh, in August, the Beatles have decided to add a permanent drummer to the group, and so they pick a drummer from a band called the Black Jacks that's also playing in Liverpool at the time, and his name is Pete Best. A big reason why they picked Pete is because he was the only drummer they could find who was willing to go to Hamburg, Germany to play a, a bunch of shows that they had scheduled. So the Beatles headed to Germany with a slightly new lineup, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, Stu Sutcliffe still playing the bass, and Pete Best on drums. I highly recommend you look up uh, what it was like for them in Germany. Uh, they slept in some weird places, they, they played in some weird places, but uh, their time in Germany is a big reason why the Beatles became the band they became. They played so many shows and really got their chops up as a group that uh, they were able to do things like play Twist and Shout on one take for Please Please Me and, and a multitude of other examples. And of course, uh, their first stint in Hamburg came to a quicker end because uh, John and Paul got deported for arson and George got deported for being underaged. So uh, definitely look up all that stuff. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> So that brings us to 1961. In April of 1961, the Beatles go back to Hamburg, and this time they do so without Stu Sutcliffe. Stu actually stayed in Germany when they left the first time, um, and so now Paul McCartney uh, is going to take over on the bass and become possibly the greatest bass player in rock and roll history. But now they're back in Germany, and in June of 1961, they get an opportunity to be the backing group for a singer named Tony Sheridan, who is also playing these Hamburg clubs. And Tony is going to record uh, an EP and he needs a backup band. So he asks uh, the Beatles to be his backing band. And they record a whole bunch of music. Uh, My Bonnie Lives Over the Ocean, When the Saints Go Marching In, a song called Why. Uh, but they are also allowed to do two songs of their own. And so they record a cover of Ain't She Sweet, which is a song they will do later in their career as well. But uh, the big thing that they do in this moment is uh, they professionally record one of their own tunes called Cry for a Shadow, and it will be released commercially as the B-side to Tony Sheridan's Why. Cry for a Shadow is an instrumental, and we will not have another instrumental until uh, a couple songs into Magical Mystery Tour, one of my favorite songs. But um, this instrumental is, uh, like Cayenne, our, our second song in the catalog, is in the style of The Shadows, which was a, a big uh, instrumental rock group at the time. This song also has a very rare distinction as being the only Lennon Harrison composition in the entire Beatles catalog. There's plenty of Lennon McCartney. Obviously, uh, we already had a McCartney Harrison, uh, the first song in the catalog. This is the only time we get a Lennon Harrison composition, and it actually was originally titled Beetle Bop. Thank God they changed it to Cry for a Shadow. <laughs> so, things to listen for in this song. Um, not too much to point out, except uh, you'll hear in the background on both the uh, actual recording and the recording I'm about to make, uh, you'll hear yelling in the background. Um, that is sort of uh, to really drive home the whole uh, shadows aspect of things. The uh, guitarist of the shadows, Jet Harris, uh, he had a signature scream when they played. And so Paul and John are kind of joking around on that sort of in the background, but uh, it does add quite a nice flavor to the song, and uh, I will do my best to do the same. 
Last thing to listen for on this song, uh, it's mostly a lead guitar song, much like Cayenne was, uh, the second song in the catalog. I'll be playing the rhythm guitar, but I couldn't possibly uh, pull off the lead part. So I called up uh, one of my good buddies, Brady Weiss. I asked him to play the lead part, record it, and send it to me, and I'm going to put it together, and it's going to sound great. So uh, shout out to Brady for doing that for me. And while they would be listed as the Beat Brothers on the album, uh, please enjoy the Beatles' 10th recording, Cry for a Shadow. <laughs> 